is Pastor McClendon. I want to welcome you again to 10 Minutes to Live By. I'm so thankful that uh, these series of teachings are being a blessing uh, to you. I hope that you are benefiting and sharing not only the word with others, but sharing with others that there is teaching uh, that will bless them. I want to get right into the word today because I don't know whether it's morning, evening, or noonday for you, but I'm sure that you are busy and have some things to do. So let's look right into the Word of God for today. If you have your Bibles and you want to join me, you can grab them and turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, very familiar passage of Scripture. I'm going to read it from the New International Version, uh, being mindful that most of us are familiar if we were raised in church. We're familiar with the King James Version of the Bible. So I'm going to read it in the NIV. Then I'm going to quote some of it in the uh, King James. And let's see what the Lord has for us today. If you have your Bibles, verse 1 of chapter 12 of Romans says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, This is your spiritual act of worship. Now, if you remember this scripture or know this scripture from another version, particularly the King James, you'll find that the last clause says not what the NIV says, this is your spiritual act of worship, but the last clause will say something to this effect, which is your reasonable service. And I want to talk about that for just a moment. The Bible says to us that serving God, surrendering ourselves, and as the text actually says, presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice is not something out of the ordinary. It's not something extraordinary or even something that only super spiritual people do. He says when you understand what God has done for us through Christ Jesus, Presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice is just reasonable. You know, we live in an age today in this postmodern time when people have thrown reason and logic out of the window. Uh, We don't have conversations that make sense. We don't have philosophies that make sense. It's what anybody thinks, what anybody wants to do. But I want to suggest to you that there are some responses that are reasonable based upon the actions. Uh, If we look at Romans carefully, notice what Paul says here. He begins by saying, therefore I urge you brothers in view of God's mercy. Again, the King James says, I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God. Well, We know that God is a merciful God, and if we began to talk about his mercies, you know what Jeremiah said? Jeremiah said his mercies are new day by day, every morning. But if we look carefully at this text, Paul is referring to specific acts of God on our behalf that he's calling merciful. If you look at Romans and begin reading it at chapter 1, You'll find out in chapter 1 that Paul is presenting the gospel. He talks about in chapter 2 and 3 that all men, all mankind, whether you're Jew or Gentile, are guilty. In fact, he says in Romans 3, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned, the church gore and the non-church gore. The person like me who was raised from a baby in the church and the person who has never set foot in a church, all are in sin without Christ Jesus. In fact, he goes further in Ephesians and talks about those who are without Christ are without God, without hope, We are foreigners and we're aliens to the promises and covenants of God. All of us are in that condition. But then he goes on through the book of Romans and tells us what God has done in Christ. He says a righteousness is revealed which is by faith. In other words, we no longer have to go through the works of the law and fool ourselves into thinking that being good makes us good with God. There's nothing we can do. Listen to me. Listen. There is nothing that you and I could do 
ever have done or could ever do to make us right with God. But here is the joy and the good news of the New Testament that when we could not get right with God, God made us right. What did he do? Well, if we read through the book of Romans, we find out that God has forgiven us of our sins. And then he has adopted us and made us sons and daughters. He's given us his own spirit by which we can please him and live a life that glorifies him. We have not only salvation, but then God has provided for us continuing sanctification. And then finally, that sanctification, which is a lifelong process, will end up finally when we are like him and we will be like him. And that is our ultimate glorification. So to simplify the book of Romans, he talks about what God has done for us. God has provided salvation. God has provided sanctification. And ultimately, God will provide glorification. I want you to know that if you are saved right now, God has already determined that you'll be with him and that we will be like him. And all of this takes place because Jesus gave his life for us in our place on Calvary. Now that's a synopsis because we don't have time to go through it uh, carefully. But if you would look at Romans 1 through 10, you will find out that that's what Paul is referring to by the mercies of God. In God's mercy, he's provided sanctification. In God's mercy, he's provided salvation. And in God's mercy, he's provided glorification. Paul then speaks to you and to me as believers and says, I beseech you. It's almost in the Greek uh, equivalent to saying, I beg you. It's parakaleo. I call you alongside this truth. I beg you, I beseech you, he says, brothers, in view of what God has done, watch this. He says to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now what he's doing here is he's contrasting the sacrifices of the Old Testament to the sacrifices of the New Testament. We know that in the Old Testament, it was the blood of bulls and goats and rams and heifers that God required to be offered to him for the sins of man. But we also know, according to the word of God, that the blood of bulls and goats could never take away our sin. And guess what? What bulls and goats and rams could not do, God did for us by sending Jesus to shed his own blood on Calvary. Yes, my brothers and sisters, that's the good news of the gospel. That Jesus shed his own blood and because his blood was shed, God's justice and wrath has been satisfied. God is reconciling the world to himself. He is no longer holding our sins against us. Sins past, sins present, and sins in the future. And so as a response to what God has done, we now no longer offer bulls and goats and rams. He says, but now offer your bodies. There's a reason he says that because when we offer our bodies, he's talking about offering our whole selves. Yes, we who are saved have a responsibility to offer ourselves as living sacrifices. That means God should have your mind. God should have your body. God should have your emotions. We offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. And he tells us when we understand what God has done for us, to offer ourselves completely to him is not illogical. It's not some great sacrifice. He says, this is your reasonable service. So today as we close, I want to encourage you to offer yourselves fully to God. It's not tough. What's tough is surrendering ourselves and yielding ourselves to the will of God. But when we think about what God has done for us, for me to give him all of who I am is not unreasonable. It is our reasonable act of service. God bless you today.